Okay, well, that's clear. Uh, so, uh, Nina, when you look at the difference in how two groups perceive you, it is as stark as I have ever seen it for anyone. Uh, the progressive movement absolutely loves you, um, and the media, not so much. Um, so, uh, when we talk about you as a potential presidential contender, um, uh, when I talk to Washington reporters, they're like, oh. and I'm like, why? I literally can't name anyone in the progressive movement that is more popular. Uh, and they're just absolutely convinced that it could only be a corporate Democrat. So how do you react to something like that? And how do you overcome something like that? Well, thank God I don't have to depend on corporate media to be my measuring stick. The people are my measuring stick. And if I do decide to do something in 2024, it won't be because of the media uh, lifted me up. It be it will be because the people lift me up. See, when you're out here doing the people's bidding, sometimes that's in conflict with mainstream media. It's in conflict with neo. It's, it's in conflict with the status quo, and I'm all right with that. You know, as President Franklin D. Roosevelt said one time when he got that progressive. Uh, when progressives pushed him to be more progressive, when he said, and, and Senator Sanders said the same thing on the campaign trail, I welcome their hatred. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we love Nina Turner. Uh, I, you know, I've told this story many times, but Nina, that I'm watching a speech of yours, uh, and uh, and you get to a point. Well, first of all, you go into the crowd, which I love, and it, people have forgotten that nobody does that other than you. And then you get to a point where you say, you know. Uh, they say I'm an angry black woman. Yeah. And that's when you paused and I was like, don't say it, don't say it. That's when everybody apologizes, right? He says, no, I'm not, please. Right, and you're like, damn right I am. I'm like, she's the one, she's the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lean into that angry. I'm just saying, I mean, if you ain't mad about what is happening, you know, 92 million people in climbing without health care, you know, underinsured or uninsured. If you ain't angry that folks are facing eviction, Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Congress can go on breaks while people are suffering. If you ain't angry that people are playing games with the military industrial complex, that even in the House of Representatives, now we get what Mitch gonna do. Mitch got to go. But even in the House of Representatives, we can't pass a 10% cut on the Pentagon budget. If you ain't angry that people in this country can't make ends meet, we can't even get a basic universal income. People uh, haggling about whether or not we're gonna keep the $600 extra a week going. If you ain't angry that essential workers are not protected and doctors and nurses don't have all the, the, the equipment that they need. If you're not angry that our babies because of COVID and the fact that we were not prepared are going to be set back, especially in poorer communities from an education perspective. If you are not angry that people going to bed hungry every night, babies going to bed hungry every night in a hegemon nation, Baby, if you're not angry, something is wrong with you. And you know, I had a boss who once said, if your hair is on fire, you Hello, ought to somebody. Act like, Hello, somebody. You have to act like your hair is on Hello, fire. Somebody. Our whole body is on fire right now. People are suffering. The pandemic just blew the roof off of the illusion. There are no more illusions in the United States of America, or dare I say the world, that the people who are catching hell lay bare were catching hell five years ago, 10 years ago, hell, 10 minutes ago. Those are the people. And if we can't elect folks to office, all levels of government, but particularly the federal level, where they ain't got the balance, one damn budget, who are, don't have the will to stand up for the people against, if, if, if they're corporate, Folks and people giving you donations who can't see how people are suffering. If the if the if the wealthy folks in this you're not making enough money. What is it? The twelve wealthiest people control one trillion dollars. Mm. I mean that's called predatory capitalism. It's called excessive greed, and we don't give a damn who dies. Mm. I mean, if you got to get your money from folks like that, then you don't need their money. It is something unseemly and immoral. And some of these same people who do believe in a God will go to damn church knowing what the hell would Jesus do? He be turning over the money tables like he did. That's what he would be doing. So I'm tired, I'm tired of the foolishness being in Jink. I'm over it, been over it. So yeah, I'm an angry black woman and you're damn right. My hair is on fire and I am going to act like my hair is on fire at all times. That's me. Preach it. Mm -hmm. 
preach. <laughs> My God. Teach it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I've got I don't know if you're waiting on me to say something, Jake, but there's absolutely nothing that needs to be said after Nina Turner, the indomitable Nina Turner. <laughs> All right. So, for, for by the way, uh, if you want to hear more of that, uh, and Ian's got a t- uh, podcast, Hello Somebody, and you're gonna love it. So make sure you check that out. Nina, before I let you go, then uh, let me let me ask one more question. Um, so, in order to do it right next time, we got to learn the lessons of the last two times. So, give me your biggest takeaways from what went wrong and how we can fix it in 2024. We got to know that the neoliberals see us coming. They saw that in 2016, how well the senator did, and they saw him coming this next time. Not only him, but they saw the movement behind him coming. And they had to all coalesce. We were not agile enough as a movement. We need some more discipline. Now, you know, we we write on the issues, but baby, we got to get discipline to be able to overtake an entrenched system that is not going to roll over and say, you know what, progressives, y'all so right. We do need to take care of Mother Earth. People do need uh, universal health care. We do have to do something with a criminal justice system that is, Lord have mercy, don't get me started. So we have to organize and be disciplined and move like we want to win. It is not enough to have the right ideas, baby, we got to win. It is time to prepare right now. There's an African proverb that says the following, one must never build their shield on the battlefield. If we want a different outcome and a different result in 2024, then it's shield building time right now. Because they coming for us and they they are going to coalesce because they fear the change that we're talking about. Leaders who answer 99.9% to the everyday people of this nation, they fear it. So we got to organize. You know, Brother Killer Mike put it best. I can't put it any better than he did. He said, plot, plan, strategize, organize, mobilize, and capitalize. Baby, that's what we need to do right now. We can't get ready in 2024. We need to get ready right now. Yeah. Um, look, uh, There is a squad that is not yet in Congress, but I just want folks to whisper of a dream. Um, Nina Turner, Killer Mike, Jamal Bowman, or E. Bush. Okay, if you like the last squad, wait till you get a load of this squad. (laughs) There it is. That's that's, that's too hot to handle. I don't know if the world ready for that. Yes. 